around. Welcome to episode 14 of Things That Go Bump in the Night. I'm just going to say off the top, when you're listening to this, you're probably going to hear loads of explosions in the background. Yeah, I can yeah, I can hear them. I'm sure it's getting picked up. You might even hear my dog whining as well. Yeah, oh yeah, dogs hate fireworks, man. It's um, Yeah, they've been going off like crazy around here. We've got a couple of fields around where we live and um, people to are taking... To be fair, it's probably, it's probably not as bad as it normally is under normal years Very you know true. It, it, could, it sounds like a war zone yes but, yeah, it can. you know Coming. this is just uh, acceptable i guess yeah yeah all in all man how's your week been we uh we're coming off the back of your birthday yeah this weekend did you have a good birthday in oh you? man i had a brilliant brilliant time my kids actually said to me because we were forced to stay home yes bizarrely they actually said they thought it was the best halloween they'd had just because we oh, spent so much man, time. That's so cool just oh, watching that's awesome. films with popcorn. We we did even did indoor trick or treating. Yeah, I remember so you saying you were doing. I kept running. I kept running places. through the house, hiding behind different doors. <laughs> oh, with their for them. oh, that's so cool, man! That, that's such a good setup. What a great way to do Halloween for your kids. And of course, and... I even got uh, my face. I saw. Did your wife do that? No, I did it. With oh, you done it? Yeah, you, you done the whole thing. Oh, well yeah. done. It looked really good. It looked really, really good. I, I really liked it. If uh, you guys and girls out there didn't see that, go on. Um, Go on Chris's Twitter and uh, he is made up as the lead singer of the band Ghost, which we keep talking about. And, and we are going to jump into an episode on Ghost as soon as the new album drops, whenever that may be. But yeah, dude, that um, that makeup was insane. That was really good. Went really well with your pumpkin. It took me a long time. Did it do. really? I How really... long did it actually take? It's probably, probably about an hour, I think, it took me to do wow. it. Okay. And, you know, up, you, doing face makeup for Halloween, it's normally rush job, yeah. quicker you do it, the kind of the better it looks. But this just because it's so clearly straight lines of black and white, it just, yeah. it was, it just took ages. And on a slight detour here, um, I did read something today saying Tobias Forge reckons the new album's not going to be out till the latter half of next year now. What? I know. I know. So what the hell happened there? I don't know. I need to. I need to um, reread, make sure the dates are everything are uh, stacking yeah. up. But I just was looking it up. To, if that's the yeah, case. well, I was looking it up to see if there was any more news, and I just read it today saying that they're looking to coincide with the next uh, tour, which wouldn't be until after yeah. the summer, yeah. which would make sense. Well, to don't me, they? Man. Yeah, but don't they normally? Don't go to normally release the album, and then they go on tour with the album. And then at the end of the tour, they kill whatever the That's right, character yeah. is at that point, yeah, and and give birth to the new, the new yes. character slash lead singer. So yeah, wouldn't they release the album? I don't know, but everything's up we'll in the air, right? So we'll who see. knows? Yeah, they definitely had tour plans that they had to put off. So who knows where that was going? And I guess they haven't had a chance to really perform much of the album live to see what works and what doesn't. So I guess the, yeah, the the new one, yeah. Well, According to what I read today, it hasn't even been recorded yet. Oh, so where was them other bloody reports coming from? That's interesting. <sighs> I don't know. Do you Who know, knows? I could, I could completely have this upside down. So, <laughs> Who, knows? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Everyone could have it upside down. To be fair. So let's get on to some horror news. There hasn't been too much within the last week. So the news we're dropping is kind of over the last two weeks, to be honest. And we're going to kick off with. The next four films, the titles and breakdowns of the next four films in the Welcome to Blumhouse series have been revealed. Mm. Now, we did review the others. We know a few of you out there watched them. I think it's safe to say that it underwhelmed with the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah with the hype that was surrounding it, I think it underwhelmed. What I will say, I think they saved the best or last. By design, you normally do that, right? You want to you yeah, end stronger. You wouldn't end on a on a low point, would you? Right, exactly. So, from what I understand, these are out of the eight films, we are getting the four best last. Could be completely wrong on that, but let's see. What did you think of what's dropped, and any of the four that stick out to you? They, um, yeah, I mean, it's so hard to tell, isn't it? But I mean, all four of them sound really good. Um, I would have said that the film uh, Black as Night, yes, just sounded like the most normal if you like it you know it sounded like the kind of thing that i've seen before vampires and boy meets girl kind of thing and it didn't really 
I mean, I, I watch it, don't get me wrong, but it, every other film has made me think, well, I haven't seen that before. And, you know, that that that, that sounds like it's an interesting voice, but I, I could be completely wrong. This one and it doesn't mean it's going to be a bad thing, but this one just um, feels like it's something that's that's been done many times before. Uh, the one that actually really jumped out at me was The Manor. Yeah, The Manor, I completely agree. I completely agree. The manner for me is the one that really, really jumped out, and I thought to myself, "That's the one." I, I really like that. So, do you want to just touch on what the manner is about? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, this lady gets moved into a nursing home after she's uh, she has a stroke, but when she gets there, there's she feels like there's some sort of entity that's preying on the residents that are already there. And so she's having to try and convince people that she doesn't belong there to get away which is obviously uh, very difficult because when i first read that i read through these a couple of times but when i first read that i thought it was a mental institution she'd have to convince them that she was sane but yes it's not which is quite nice anyway because it would have been very easy to do it as in a kind of mental institution but yes. this is you know a, a, a more traditional setting and um, the fact that she's suffered a stroke how she's going to convince people that she doesn't belong there is going to be very interesting in itself i would guess she didn't suffer a stroke i would guess the something else happened to her yes and yeah. you know they're they're playing it off as a stroke and that's why she doesn't belong there because she didn't actually have the stroke and it was a possession or something like that but yeah i really like the idea of that i like the idea of we were saying about you know with this series giving voices and putting people in the front of the camera you don't really see and one of the things that isn't really spoke about is a cast of older actors. You you never really see a cast mm -hmm. of older actors or, you know, your cast isn't really filled out with many older people. This film sounds like it's pretty much all older people. And, yeah, I'm really into seeing them and I'm really into seeing how they're going to tackle that one. And then kind of by the same breath, the final film in the lineup here is a film called Bingo. Yes, And that essentially is the same setup with elderly friends who kind of in a little, this is about like a group. They're like a strong, stubborn group and their leader keeps them together as a community, as a family. It's, it's pointed out, but little did they know their beloved bingo hall is about to be sold to a much more powerful force than money itself. So I think that sounds quite, black comedy-ish i i, I feel think like, it's gonna be yeah yeah but... i think we're gonna get sunk in there but again i quite like the idea that it revolves around some older actors i think that's going to be quite interesting to give it its due i mean every single film has, has been given a voice to people you don't normally see whether that's the writer or in the case of this the the, the actors as well so i yes. think on that alone it sh the whole thing needs to be applauded but um you're right what you said at the beginning uh, for some reason, I was underwhelmed by the first lot. Yeah, and it's hard because I, I did. I, I enjoyed the films, but I don't know why. I don't know why I was expecting more. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was just built up too much. I don't know. I think you said last week or the, the week before we was talking about last last time that they they could have been really really strong festival films. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I I hope there's a there's a there's a little bit more kick in these ones. Yeah, I do. I hope they stick around in the memory a little bit longer. And the I feel like the others maybe were rushed a little bit, and they didn't work out some of the kinks. They I were hope quite that... flat. I thought. Yes. Yeah. I I completely agree. I completely agree. I hope these are given a bit more time to to breathe in a little bit more of a development space and you know hopefully that's the case because they're they're coming out a good few months after so i'm sure yeah, this it's not till touches. um january is it or february yeah i think it's um i don't know if there's an official date actually it's just the beginning of next year at the minute mm. yeah i think it's just like returning early 2021 so yeah to be seen man yeah gonna be interesting so from those not so much sequels, but um, follow-ups in the series onto some news that dropped about an upcoming sequel. So last year we had, I believe it was last year, we had the big screen adaptation of Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. And we've known for a long time that Scary Stories 2 is on the way. 
and the director has now revealed um, not too many details, but the fact that he believes they've got a really good story going into the second one. Del Toro is returning and apparently has a story credit on this one as well. So probably a little bit more involved than just his producer role last time around. Did you yeah. see the first one? Did I did, yeah, I did. Um, what did you think? Yeah, I thought it was quite good. I thought it was like, um, just just for clarification, was it aimed at children? The kind of, I think it's like a mix, because the because book I, is like a children's book, right? They're like quite a scary children's book. Yeah, I mean, it was, it, it kind of felt like a, a, a little bit more grown up. Yes. Because uh, it came out, you know, quite, quite close to the last Goosebumps film. And I think it just felt like a little bit more grown up. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. I think it was a more grown up version of the Goosebump films that were made, where I, I definitely think it was it was more for a younger audience, mm. but an adult audience that maybe grew up with a book or had yeah an affiliation in some way, yeah, could could go and enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I did enjoy it, and uh, the the image on on the, the the news site we're looking at is you know that that kind of doughy looking entity. From sort of like the halfway point, I think uh, it's probably like the the biggest recurring image that I can remember from that. Either that, or there it wasn't there a story with a toe as well. Yeah, uh, he eats a stew yeah. with a toe. Yeah, that was. That's yeah, that that's the one that really <laughs> that yes. really got me. That one did. It was in the stew or something, wasn't it? A bloody toe. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was in the stew, wasn't it? It was. Um, yeah, I can't remember exactly where it fell on it. I've I've got to be honest, it didn't have the biggest impression on me. I feel it uh, oddly you saying the Blumhouse films fall in a little bit flat. I felt the first scary stories fell a little bit flat. I thought yeah. they'd done some amazing work with the makeup effects. Yeah, visually it looked good. Didn't yeah, it? visually it looked good. But the problem is when you worry so much about that and when you put so much stock into look at these great, you know, practical effects and you kind of forget about the storytelling. And I don't yeah. feel the storytelling was as strong as it needed to be to really pull it off. And, and this is why I asked if it was a children's film as well, right. because right. I kind of, if, if you'd said to me, no, Chris, it's a serious adult horror film, then I would probably not uh, be so kind to it. I just, I did, you know, it wasn't, wasn't scary. It wasn't, um, there was no twists and turns that you didn't really see it coming. It was just a kind of just... Uh, Friday night popcorn, watch it and go kind of thing. Yeah, you know, I certainly wouldn't call it a classic, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I definitely I looking enjoyed it to enough. The next one, well, I wouldn't say I'm looking forward to the next one, but yeah, I'll watch it. I, um, I just completely think, agree with that. I kind of feel like a bit like the, the Blumhouse films. It was probably overhyped too much. Yeah, I agree. I feel it actually didn't do any favors having Del Toro's name attached to it i feel yeah that really ramped the hype up and you know the caliber so the, of the, the, he makes the thing is with del toro um i have a similar feeling with tim burton in that their work so stylized you kind of you either love it or hate it and i love it to a certain extent so you know you see a tim burton film you know it's a tim burton film and likewise yeah. with del toro to my mind uh, del toro the far superior filmmaker. Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. That. yeah. Especially of um, they oh. both made. Oh God, yeah. yeah. They they both made films that I've really, really enjoyed. But I also find that they've made films that I just think, ah, oh, here we go again. It's it's the same looking things. Look, I could kind That's of see a bit of a Del Toro influence on the way that things look in the original. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, that's original. So what Del Toro films haven't really worked for you? I'm putting you on the spot now. Um, I loved um, Hellboy. Yeah. And I loved uh, Blade 1 and 2. Yes. Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, Don't tell me you didn't like Pan's Labyrinth. <laughs> Come on. No, I'm not. I'm not Pan's Labyrinth that. is a masterpiece. Um, okay, so I did like I did like um, Pan's Labyrinth a lot. Uh, I got 
a bit confused by it, but the the, the films that I really didn't like were uh, like Pacific Rim. Oh, okay. So, okay. I mean, I just I just kind of felt that that really felt flat for me, and the the very highly highly stylized um, monsters in it, yeah. uh, I just 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 didn't work for me. Um, and you look back at some of his more earlier stuff before he kind of went on that path. Um, I enjoyed a lot more. And th- th- don't get me wrong, I do I did really really like uh, Pan's Labyrinth, but I just felt like we're starting to get to the point where uh, that was that was probably his peak for me. In fact, Pan's Labyrinth. It's not. Oh, I it's not that I didn't like it. Oh, uh, Pan's Labyrinth is but I, the best I kind of did like, Yeah, and I think going beyond that, I kind of feel like he's he's got a bit of tim burton going on and um well i don't know did you see the shape of water yeah did you yeah. not like it see That's i love right. i love the shape <laughs> i love the shape of water i i was a big big fan of shape of water crimson peak i yeah i can see i like crimson there. peak but it, it was a bit flat it wasn't his best though i don't think pacific rim i didn't mind too much but then I also understand why you wouldn't like it, if that makes sense. But I... Yeah. See, I'm a real sucker for, like, a big Godzilla-type film, a big, like, yeah. monster film. So, yeah, I thought Pacific Rim had enough in it, yeah, that I liked. And I, I feel like, actually, if it was by a lesser filmmaker, well, as Pacific Rim 2 was, it mm. definitely doesn't hold up to the first one. Uh, the Hellboy films, I yeah, I I love both Hellboy one and two. I'm gutted him and Ron Perlman never got to make number three and end out their trilogy. You know, rumors are it might still happen. Who knows? But yeah, see, I'd on, on the flip it. side, I think when he when he does it right, I think he does it like Blade two. I like better than Blade one. Well, he didn't make Blade one. He yeah. only made Blade two. So yeah. Blade two is. Yeah, Blade 2 is the far superior film out of the Blade franchise for me. And then I feel like Hellboy 2, like I really like the first Hellboy film, but I feel like because he's given more of a free reign in Hellboy 2, there's some really, really gorgeous stuff in that film. And then Pan's Labyrinth is yeah, yeah, yeah. absolute masterpiece in my eyes. And then you've got his older films as well. He's a uh, Spanish language film. So they're... Yeah, I, I quite like them as well. But yeah, I definitely think Del Toro. But Del Toro definitely comes with baggage as well. De, you know, Del Toro is a huge name. He is a... Mm, you put yeah, his yeah, name yeah. on something, you're, you know... It's it's a bit like in the 80s when Spielberg would produce stuff and they'd put Spielberg's name on it. Now, you know, now and mm. again, you get back to the future. I mean, I think the, 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 the film that really did it for me um, that turned me off of what he was doing was maybe one of his less known ones was, was don't be afraid of the dark oh yeah and the reason why i didn't like that is because it's a it's a 70s horror direct to tv 70s horror and he did a, his was the remake yeah and the 70s horror had such a profound effect on me when i was a kid okay okay and i've, I've he only yeah, produced watch it, it since it's extremely upset yeah, 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 but the creatures, yeah. the creatures are still yeah, still well, that well, yeah, Del Toro. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he I definitely suppose, has, he, like, you know, when it's it's like the fairies and stuff, isn't it? It's very Del Toro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting, man. I mean, yeah, to bring it back round to scary stories too. Yeah, I like you said. I I think you hit the nail on the head. Not overly excited. Am I going to watch it? Of course, I'm going to watch it. But will I be running out to the cinema to see it? I mean, that's presuming we can actually run out to a cinema. Might be one I wait, wait until I can watch it at home. So yeah, I think to wrap up Scary Stories 2, I think we're both in agreement. Not overly excited, but we will watch it when it comes out. But yeah, let us know what you think of Scary Stories 1. If you're listening to this, drop, the, uh, drop a comment down below. That does a shameless plug. That does help the channel as well. If you comment and, you know, give a thumbs up and stuff like that. It helps with the uh, silly YouTube algorithm, as they say, to something we're very excited about. The complete opposite. The complete opposite. I could not be more excited for this. 
it is a film by the studio A24, who some people love A24, like us. I adore A24. I, they're Beautiful. probably, yeah, they're probably my favourite studio in, in the world at the minute. And they they haven't recently dropped this. They dropped this trailer a little while ago, but it got pushed back and some new details have come out of the film. So it's kind of been re-released, if you will, re-advertised. It's an A24 film called The Green Knight. Now, the reason this is back in the press is it has officially been rated R for violence and graphic nudity. Good, so Chris, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, always good. Can't go wrong with a bit of violence and graphic nudity. I mean, so, yeah, I, I hadn't seen this trailer before. Yeah. Um, as soon as it starts, you can see it's an A24 film. Yes, it just yes, looks way. visually stunning, and it's not—it's yes. not just the visuals; it's the the sound, the the, the sound design as well is incredible. Another of A twenty four's film, so Midsummer, I enjoyed, but I wasn't overly keen on it. Okay, however, stunning, absolutely stunning uh, to look at, and I yeah. think every film of theirs, as I say, even though Midsummer wasn't to my taste, absolute works of art. Absolute works fine. This this looks incredible. This actually got me excited about a film about an, a, a medieval legend, which I'm not sure. I'm not sure I, I could have been, but A twenty four has done it. Um, it just it looks fantastic. I can't wait for it. Yeah, I completely agree, man. I think like medieval medieval legends are not something I normally get overly excited about. No, but <laughs> no. this film is. Yeah, I, I can't wait for this. We're, we're going to drop the link to the trailer down below because everyone's got to check this out. Like Chris said, even just from the point of view of... The sound design's great. The sound is incredible. I highly recommend you watch it with the sound on. However, I would recommend a second viewing of the trailer. Just turn the sound off and just look at the imagery. The imagery works on just such a profound level it's it's incredible man just that the trailer opens and yeah like pushes in on the main character and oh it's just the lighting it's like this top down lighting as the camera moves in it something in the background kind of the, the angle of the camera that makes it look like a crown oh it's incredible it's absolutely incredible it and there's some puppets and you know Always oh, a big know, fan of some puppets. You, you love puppets, do you, Scott? Love puppets. You can't <laughs> go wrong with some puppets. But yeah, man, this looks this looks insane. And I, I can't wait for this to come out. I am gutted that I believe this got pushed back. I'm gutted that um we didn't get that the it this year. However, from what I understand, it is dropping quite early next year. So yeah, I you know, hopefully we're gonna um be able to see this very very quickly and not just see it quickly i believe if it doesn't go in a cinema if cinemas are not back open because here in the uk they're all shut down for a month again obviously in places like la and new york i believe they're still closed so if cinemas are not open this can't go in cinemas i definitely think this is going to vod right they i don't think a24 are going to be scared about putting this on vod i wouldn't have thought so I wouldn't have thought so. If anyone's going to, you know, if anyone's going to get do something like that, surely it's them. Yes. But then yeah. they, but but then again, they've um, they've been churning out some crackers recently. So oh, could yeah. they be hoping for some of that cinema release money? I I wouldn't be surprised. I money aside, if I have the choice, you do watch this in a cinema though, for the the exact reasons you said. I I really did like Midsummer. I, I really really like Midsummer, but you seeing that film in the cinema is a completely different experience. Like you said, it, it's mm. gorgeous. Everything they do, even something like Hereditary, where it doesn't have that big scowl of a Midsummer or even of the Green Knight. I mean, if you see some of the shots in that film, it, it looks massive. It looks huge. But yeah, Hereditary is all within a house really, but on the big screen stunning film absolutely stunning the cinematography is incredible and they have the story to go with it but yeah i i would love to see this i believe this 
is getting a cinema release or is planned for a cinema release. I hope I get to see it in a cinema. You know, I would I would love to be able to. You know what? I would love for this to drop in January. Me and you go out to a cinema near us and we record oh, straight after. Good, yeah, that'd we record great. straight after our thoughts, man. That, that, would, that would be great. Be insane. I, I would I would love that. What a way to kick off twenty twenty one, eh? Because I mean it's been a weird year, man. It's been it's been a strange year and I have I've still managed to see, you know, a, a decent amount of films, but in terms of like films in the cinema, I normally see most of my films during the year in the cinema and this year basically nothing i think last time i went to cinema was like february that is the it's, it's, yeah. it's sad times isn't it yeah it is man it really is uh, you know and stuff's getting pushed back again you know we've seen some i know we keep bringing it, it up on this podcast but stuff's got pushed back again I do, cinemas um... are very worried about if they can stay open or not yeah I wonder when this film comes out. I wonder if uh, a certain certain brigade of filmgoers might be annoyed that an actor called Dev Patel is playing an English yeah. classical uh, legend character. Could it's it's. I mean, it's a difficult one so, because from a you know taking a completely unbiased view, I think on the one hand you want to keep historical accuracy on the other hand what's the problem with having your own interpretation on something and on well, the... i think there's a line i think there's a line i think like if you're talking about someone playing martin luther king then yeah you you should get a yeah, that's actor a, to that, play that's, martin that's, luther king. yeah that's completely different. if yeah. you're <laughs> if you're talking about a medieval fantasy film then i think anyone can play whatever yeah. character they want because that's yeah. not real right is even if some of those characters are based in historical fact the story you're telling isn't real so that story yeah that you know the the way you imagine that story could could be anyone it's a uh, yes yeah, an in it is an interesting line to walk i agree with you i think there might be some people that oh, take oh, exception I, think, to I it. think they will i think there will i think there'll be people who you know they'll they'll see a, a a brown face in a medieval English setting. Yeah. Say you know this is ridiculous. Um, from an artistic point of view, um, and just from a human point of view, I think it's fantastic. And um, but secondly, what a lot actor. of the people, yeah, and, and what a lot of the people who have the would probably have a problem with this. What they don't seem to realise is that there were people of all colors and races obviously not in the numbers there are now but there were in our country yeah. and like you know um saint george was i think he was from turkey wasn't he yeah it's yeah. It, you know well that's the that's the other thing people, people people what they believe is historical accuracy is yeah. not it, it is the that has been changed throughout history and you know what you perceive it as today is probably vastly different from the way that person actually looked mm. you know i mean my my one always comes down to a lot of these you, you know i'm not saying it's, it, it's exclusive but a lot of people that tend to moan about that are also christians that believe jesus was white yeah so you know if you believe that jesus was the only white guy in jerusalem then you know you're fucking insane in in my <laughs> You just it's ridiculous. <laughs> like you can't like don't if you if you oh, believe well, if you believe in in Jesus to begin with, great, that's fine. But he's not a white guy. He's like there's no way in hell he's a white guy. There's nothing there's no way. No way. He would literally go you know, going back to uh Little Britain, he, he would be the only white guy in the village then, wouldn't he? He really would be. <laughs> he really would be. It's like yeah crazy but yeah you you tend to find that it it works for them when they want it to work for them and uh yeah it does you know they've got most of these people have no problem with you know historical films about ancient egypt where everyone's white but you know then they then they have a problem mm. with a knight being played by a person of color it's it's ridiculous it really is it's it's hypocrisy really i mean you're yeah, you're, you're just you're making it fit for what you want. And also, the other thing is, 
and I say this as a filmmaker, it's a film. It's not real. So yeah, do what you want. You know, it's you know, it's it's crazy. Do what you want. On 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 the flip side, yeah. Um, I would also argue that if they wanted the entire cast to be white, because that's the way they they believe that it was in that area, they should be allowed to do that as well. I think the artistic license should work. Uh, both ways and you know don't, don't get me wrong i think people should be cast on who's best for the role um but i think that the, the defense can go both ways in certain situations especially way back then as well so for example if you had like um i don't know if you if you was doing um a, a, a film about a little village out in the god knows where in america or even in this country and um, you had a small cast and they were all white I wouldn't see a problem with that. Equally, I wouldn't see a problem if there was a black person or an Asian person in there. Um, But I wouldn't want someone to appear in it because they felt like they had to. Now, no doubt, Dev Patel's playing uh, Seguin in this because he's the best person for the job and he's a phenomenal actor. Um, But I, I I think it works both ways as well. I think it can. I think you've got to be careful because... It's, it, I mean, it depends what you want to get from it, right? Like, are you going? I think within mm, film, mm. there is historic, like, with certain things, there should be historical accuracy, right? Yes. I believe that should lend itself more to the story and the facts you are telling within those stories. I believe the actors that you then use to tell that story in my opinion, should more represent the audience that you want to tell that story to. Mm. So my argument should it would be if you're in a position where you can cast whoever you want, and, and I mean that in the sense of that an actor isn't already attached to a property. Yeah. I always would lean towards casting multiple races of people purely because then the audience can see themselves up on the screen and i think that's and not just races of people sex as well i think that's one of the big problems with a lot of women in film at the minute is there there isn't enough and there isn't enough age as well yeah female heroes yeah people of age and so when you're going to watch these films who you know who who have they got to look up to and i think that is a big problem because and you know you see a lot of the fanboys that cry about that stuff like you see Mm -hmm. the fanboys that cry about the all-female ghostbusters right and they're like this is ridiculous why are they all women well it's not for you like you've got your ghostbusters you've got your ghostbusters like that's not going anywhere just because they made this new one that doesn't delete the old one but that was such a that was such a weird um, it's, but that's, criticism it's always weird. as well wasn't it it's always weird it's crazy and you know all you need to do is go on google and google the premiere of that film and when you see the little girls that are standing in line dressed as ghostbusters then you get it then you understand then you'll know why it's important for representation like that because everyone deserves to be seen up on the screen i there's what 20 20 odd marvel films that have been released today i've seen every single one in the cinema i the biggest impact a screening on a screening within the cinema has ever had on me was black panther and i i try and be very open-minded i try and see stuff from a lot of people's different point of views but you know the truth is you're until you see stuff with your own eyes sometimes it is hard to understand the the importance of stuff even if you think you understand the important stuff i thought mm. i understood the importance of why we need films like black panther why we need these big massive blockbuster films that have this you know like really really great representation of a culture we don't see that very often on that scale. I thought I understood that. And then I went to watch Black Panther. And you see kids, you see teenagers, you see adults, you see older generation, you see people you have never, ever seen at any of these other Marvel films. You see cues around the block 
of people that are not at any of these other Marvel films. And then and then you get and, and then I got it. I really got it. And then I was like, okay, this is it. Because the the truth is, people that look like us, that there's a film every week that we can queue up around the block to you know yeah. when really when you're kids when it's really important is when you're a kid you know when when you're when you're a white kid and you can go to a captain america film you can be like that's me up on that screen when you see iron man that's me up on that screen spider-man that's me up on that screen you yeah like people should be able to imagine they can be any character they want but it is a little bit harder when that character doesn't look like you so now when black kids go to watch black panther or when little girls go to watch Captain Marvel, now they go, that's me. That's me. I, I can be that character. I can. So I think it's, in my opinion, and again, just like everything, really, I think some of this is subjective. I don't think it's all subjective. I think there are basic level interactions we should be building into this stuff. But, I, you yeah. know, on, on some subjective level, my opinion is that it should come down to the audience. And I, I feel like audiences should be for any of my films. I want people to, I want people from everywhere to, to be sitting in that cinema. And if I'm ever lucky to have a film in a cinema one day, I want that, mm. I want that auditorium filled with people from all walks of life. So, you know, I, I hope to, to do that. I hope to put cast of people in my films that, that I can do. And that's saying, that's saying I haven't, I wasn't very aware of when I first started making short films. Mm. It wasn't something I was very aware of. It was something that I was probably quite naive to, if I'm honest. I, you know, all my, uh, they're all a white cast. In, in, I, I've, so, you know, I, I hope to change it. And, see, you know, I, 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 I don't feel that our view is that different in that. So when I say, I think, you know, people should be cast the best person for the job. What you've just said, when you say you would lean towards um, getting a more diverse uh, cast of people, um, that's to me that's the same thing because for what you're trying to do, those are the right yeah. people for the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely I agree. I suppose the only to... the, 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 the only area that I feel it's okay to not do that is if the story and the filmmaker feels it's important not to do that for the story because of the story they're trying to tell now you know granted that's going to be very far and few between um but there must be instances where someone might say they want an all female cast or an all black cast or an all white cast um because it's important to the story in 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 that case i think it's defensible for the art of the filmmaker I and as agree. I say, that would be I do very, agree on very few instances. Of well, I do that. agree on that. I, yeah, I think I should touch on that. I'm not. I'm not trying to say what he was saying was was wrong in the slides. I actually do think we completely agree. No, I just feel like I should that. clarify yeah. myself. Yeah. <laughs> but before, no, I agree. Like, like I said, people if get the wrong idea. <laughs> if you're making a picture about Martin Luther King, I do think Martin Luther King should be played by a black person. If you're making a film on Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill should be played by a white person. However, yeah. if that character is fictitious or the world in which that film is set is fictitious, then I think all bets are off. For instance, when people say yeah. James Bond can't be black because James Bond is yeah, is that's white, ridiculous. well, that's ridiculous because James Bond isn't a real person. I so always James feel Bond like, can be whatever you uh, want. I always feel like Idris Elba missed out because of the uproar there was. Yeah, when I do. Yeah. It was it was being sort of touted around that he was in line for it. I still think he probably will be the next one. But I, I do, I do I hope, if, even if um, it's for a film or two. Daniel Craig has stayed a bit longer than he intended to. Yeah, I agree. I think for a film or two, I'd love to see him take over. I really would. I think they've also done something interesting with the next film that's coming out, where even though James Bond is still played by Daniel Craig he's yeah. no longer the 007 and the 007 is now a yeah. female and i like that idea because 007 is a, that's the code name it isn't james bond it's you know but then i've also seen i've also seen some interesting arguments of well what if james bond was the code name 
then you could give that to anyone, right? Like James Bond doesn't actually have to be the person. Yes. Yeah, yeah, James yeah. Bond is the code name, so you could you could give that to anyone. I like that idea too, and that actually the argument for that is then all the films are connected, and that's why you've got all these different actors that have played James Bond. And while we're on the thing of James Bond, like shout out Sean Connery, like what a what a loss this. Uh, oh man, this week. I mean, he was like ninety years old. <sighs> Good run, but still, man. It was. It was to, to be fair. Yeah, he had. He had a good run, but um, it hurts, though, right? Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a that's a big one. That's a real. Do you big know? One. Do you know? Obviously, you think of Sean Connery. You, you know, you you're gonna think of Bond. But do you know what image pops in my head when I think of Sean Connery? It's uh, it's uh, India. Got if you can guess. Yes, it's just yeah. seeing him with that little hat and the beard. Yeah, the little. Yeah, yeah, thinking, yeah. That's you know. I do you know what I agree. I agree. I agree. It, yeah, Sean Connery for me is yeah, it's that Junior. Indian, yeah. Junior. Yeah. That's it, man. That's exactly it. Apologies for the dodgy Scottish accent there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was bang on. I thought I thought it was pretty good, mate. It weren't bad at all. Not bad at all. So yeah, we um we got sidetracked a little bit there, but do you know what? Well, That's just, a good conversation. A it's a good conversation. I, I like having those conversations. I think those conversations are needed. I think uh, different views are needed on them. I, again, I, I will tell I actually think our views are, are bang on and and pretty much in line with each yeah, other. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You, you, um, need, you need to have these kind of... Uh, you do. And I think some people are scared to. I think some people are scared to have these conversations. They're scared to listen to, you know, why other people feel something should be a certain way and why people shouldn't be the other way mm. i do think there are some people that are wrong in in this instance i think the you know the people saying james bond can't be anything other than a white straight male are ridiculous yeah. that's crazy yeah. um yeah and and then the same with like superheroes you know when they say superheroes can't be of a different ethnicity that's fucking crazy too because they're not real either they're, they're fictitious characters wait, but wait yeah for uh wait for uh, female Thor. That will that will get them going. That will get them going. Yeah, I remember when that happened in the comics, man. Yeah, me too. Wow, people people lost their shit. And Black Spider Man. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They um, yeah, they always they always do, man. You got Iron Man as well, or Iron Heart as she's called. Yep. Yeah. Which um, but yeah, why why not, man? Like everyone should be able to see themselves in these films, especially these big blockbuster films that ain't real. They're fiction. You know, everyone should be representing them. It's ridiculous that they shouldn't. It really is. So let's talk. So that's rounding up the green light. Can't be any more excited about this. Um, just, Again. Yeah. The sooner the better. As far as yeah, I'm sooner say. the better. Sooner the better. Drop your comments below because, um, yeah, I'm actually really interested to see what people think of this trailer. Just off the bat. I think a lot of people are going to get a kick out of it. So, yeah, drop it below. Let us know what you think. And that brings us on to a possible sequel that apparently there's more of a chance of this happening now more than ever is a sequel to Neil Marshall's Dog Soldiers. Mm. Thoughts? Well, do we need another Dog Soldiers? No, we don't. I think it's fantastic. I really... Not the not the news, the film. Dog the Soldiers. film, yeah, I do. I, I, I think it. the first film's amazing. Yeah. When I when I first watched it, I thought this is going to be one of those uh, low budget English films that uh, fine for a laugh, um, does what it says it will. But it's got it's up there with one of my favourite werewolf films, along with uh, an American Wolf in London, obviously, and Ginger Snaps. I love this film. Absolutely love Dog Soldiers, and yeah. no, I don't think it needs a sequel at all, at, uh, at all. I think it was it was a brilliant standalone single entity, do do something else kind of thing. However, it it's been something like fifteen years or something since the, the last film. Eighteen, yeah, you know I mean? eighteen it's, years. Yeah. It's um, does it does it get to a point where, you know, you 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 would want to see another one of these films i yeah i my opinion of any of this stuff is off the bat do we need it no probably not because it exists it exists as you know this great 
little horror film at the minute, right? It, it doesn't need to be diminished anymore. The same as mm. did we need a sequel to 28 Days Later? Definitely not. And it nope. didn't add anything. It, you know, it definitely I wasn't as good. I thought it took away. Well, that's the problem. That's the problem. Once once you yeah. put these sequels out into the world, once they're out there, it can lessen the experience. You know, not everything is, you know, the, the Empire Strikes Back. Not everything yeah. is going to, you know, really add. Not everything's a Godfather Part 2. There's going to, you know, look at Godfather Part 3. It, you is, know, it, is, a, it, it is a shame, though, because that, you know, that's probably a bit unfair of me in that. I, I did 28 weeks later. Um, yeah, fine. I, I enjoyed watching it, but it's nowhere. Ne- it was nowhere near what Twenty Eight Days Later did. I'm happy it exists, and I'll, you know, and I'll probably watch it if it comes on the telly. I, I enjoyed it, but could have done something else, couldn't they? I suppose that's the yeah, yeah. That's the thing. I just think it's a lot to do with what is that story and. Like if you're, I think sequels always work best when they're planned out from the start. Like if you kind of know where you're going. Like we touched on Hellboy earlier, right, from Del Toro. I do think there is real room, and I would love to see a Hellboy three. But it's because there is always planned to be a Hellboy three. There's stuff that's dropped in throughout the films that would lead to a Hellboy three. So I think when you go and watch it as a continuous story, it works. You know, it's like the Star Wars. They rebooted it, they did sort of Yes. Yeah. It was right. That was Neil Marshall. The sequel was was, Yeah, the um sorry, not sequel, the remake. Yeah. Yeah. Was uh I mean it's it's very different very different to the uh Del Toro one, which I preferred. I Mate, I couldn't get on with it. Do you know what? Asshole. So my friend of mine just refuses to watch it. Um, oh, I he loves it off. Film. And I saw it at the cinema. And I remember it got it, it didn't get rave reviews. Um, but I, I remember saying this to my mate, John. Shout out, John. And uh, I stand by this as well. If you want story, then don't watch this new Hellboy film. <laughs> if you want two hours of fire blood and monsters being impaled this is the film for you right i just felt it was an onslaught of (laughs) of (laughs) of violence um i just i I just i just thought it's you know it's it's nothing like the other hellboy films it's not a, a classic film i couldn't really even tell you uh much about it uh, story so, wise, here's a really I just, interesting. I just felt it was an onslaught of fire and violence. So we're saying it's quite interesting. So mm. obviously, last week we done our fright fest preview, right? And yeah. One of the fright fest films I spoke about was a Neil Marshall film, yeah. and during the Q and A, he gets asked why he's returned to horror. So the film he was talking about, the one that played fright fest, was called The Reckoning. He's got another film coming out that is considered to be a full return to horror. And now he's talking about another Dog Soldier film, right? So the question is, like, why is he suddenly going all gun ho and horror again? And apparently he actually, he brought it up and he he didn't shy away from the complete lack of success that Hellboy had. And he said, Mm. he, he said something quite interesting. He said, basically, they hired him to make a horror film and then didn't let him make a horror film so he kind of you know it was very brief but he did acknowledge that it is a mess of a film and that though he was paid more money to make that film and given more money than he's ever had before to make a film it's just not you know it wasn't for him and he the process just wasn't what he wanted it to be so it is always quite interesting when you you know when you get those behind the scenes glimpses of yeah yeah why stuff can go wrong so i think like where we leave that with dog soldiers is if they get back in from anywhere i don't know if it's a if it's a studio production company or private investment but however they got it and was able to do a follow-up to dog soldiers that somehow built on the first one and possibly even led to a third one because one of the actors in the original film 
after the original film was saying that the plan originally was for this to be a trilogy. So I don't know if they'd be going back to that. I don't know if they'd be going back to the idea of building this out and, you know, and having a big ending on the third one. If that was the case and Neil Marshall could have full reign of that, I'd love to see what he would do with it. But yeah, I mean, do we need it? No. If he was given full reign and, you know, it was to build upon that first one and possibly to get the trilogy that was originally talked about, would I want to see it? Yeah, I think I would. What about you? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, I, if it, yeah, I mean, if it was, if it was exactly what you wanted it to be, then yeah. Otherwise, no, steer clear. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, yeah, I think that's a great way to end that up. Again, drop your comments below because, yeah, did you like Dog Soldiers when it first came out all them years Loved ago? Loved it. 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, it, it's great. Yeah, let us know what you think, guys. And that brings us on to the creepy link of the week. Not so creepy this week, but a lot of fun. I really, really like watching this as soon as this popped up, man. Strange one, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but it's it's really well done. So go on, sir, introduce it. What we got this week? Yes. So this is a uh, pretend trailer called Star Wars versus Alien. And this guy has taken footage from uh, a couple of Star Wars films and a couple of Alien films, even Prometheus, I think. Yeah, uh, there's a shot from Prometheus. Them, splice them together to kind of give Star Wars a sci-fi horror vibe. Uh, yeah, what, what, did, what did you think of it? I really liked it, dude. I... I am a huge, as you know, I'm a huge, 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 huge Star Wars fan. And I'm also a massive Alien fan. So I think there is room. I don't think we'll ever get a full mashup, even though they're now owned by the same studio. Because um, Disney now owns them both. But I think there's real room. Oh, hold on, hold on. Who's Alien made by them? Fox. Ah. Yeah, and Disney, ah, Disney purchased okay. Fox. So, and they also own Lucasfilm. So... Yeah, so Disney now owns. So this could happen, really. Really, this could happen. They could make it happen with Predator as well. They're not going to, though. But no. what I would love to see is, obviously, they're doing series stories now on Disney+. Plus. We've obviously got The Mandalorian, which is fantastic. Yep. Uh, news dropped this week. We're probably going to get a Boba, uh, Boba Fett series very very soon as well that may be tied to the mandalorian maybe not i would love to see someone do a darker more adult star wars series set in the star wars universe but possibly with a story like this where maybe some stormtroopers or or some resistance fighters uh you know sent out to kind of clear a planet of killer aliens i think that would be that yes. would be a really cool yeah, thing i definitely think watching this yeah there is some re i like seeing the mashups of the two worlds i really did you've obviously got within the trailer i think the trailer does a really good job of it as well you've got the more light-hearted fun of star wars in there and the more serious dark edge of the alien films i think there could be a happy medium man i would love to see it i'd really really love to see it i mean that uh, disney got quite close with rogue one i thought i thought that was yeah yeah, you know, comparatively to the other Star Wars films, quite dark, and um, yeah, and I think they could go a bit further. I think they could make one that is. I don't. I can't see Disney producing a Star Wars film that's for for adults only. But no, I don't think they're ever. They could. That. They could come. They could come close. I mean, I I saw her in uh, Smith's the Toy Shop, and I don't know why they've started selling alien toys. I don't know oh, if there's really? a, a new alien film coming out or something. Yeah, you know, you can buy like the the queen, the queen mum, and all, oh, queen wow. mum, the, the, the queen mum, the mom. alien mother, <laughs> not, not the queen mum, bless her. <laughs> the queen mum. Oh man, um, I want to see that. Just, I want to see that. Just, let's just show my Englishness completely. If I was in an alien <laughs> film, watch out! It's the queen mum laying her eggs. <laughs> <laughs> the queen mum. That would be um, great. I'd love to see it with a blast. So yeah, I don't know why they've started so starting why they've started selling those things, but you know, kids today can handle more. Each generation is you know become a yeah. bit more desensitized yeah. and can handle a little bit more than the predecessor. And I think you know they could probably go a little bit darker than they did with Rogue One. Well, I think even if you look at something like Aliens, the sequel, yeah, that's a straight up action film. 
yeah, it's an action film. Essentially, yeah, yeah. takes the horror out of the first one, and James Cameron makes a straight up action film. So I think that you could have that blend. You could do that really, because both of them, both of them have that like dirty, lived in sci fi look about them. You know, they're not clean, they're not glossy. They're you know, yeah. it's, it is a dirty, lived in world. So I think you could. There is. Yeah, there is a happy medium, man. I I would love to see it. I don't think we're ever going to get a straight Alien Star Wars mashup in film or TV. You know, it, I think it already exists in the comics. Or if it doesn't, I'm I'm sure. You know, maybe we will get a comic of that down the road. But series wise, I would love to see this. I would love to see yeah, a Star Wars yeah. series. Yeah, where you or you know what even. I think they could do an episode or two within the Mandalorian show where he, yeah, yeah, yeah. he something like that. He has to, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. He gets called into action somewhere. I mean, Mandalorian. I could, and I could see two. them doing that actually, rather than yeah. a whole series. Yeah. Well, Mandalorian season two is no spoilers, but it's kind of started like that. It's a little bit darker. There's some creatures in there. You know, there's some interesting, they're playing with some interesting stuff, man. I could see, yeah, down the line. I reckon we might get sound like this. I, man, I'd be all over it. I'd be excited as hell for that. I really would. I'd love to see a whole series. Bring in horror directors to do a Star Wars series. Man, that would be good, wouldn't it? That'd be really cool. Yeah. Right. I think that's where we're uh, close it out this week, buddy. Awesome. Got any plans for tonight? Um, I'm going to finish off Truth Seekers. Oh, is it good? We could discuss it next week, couldn't we? Okay, okay. <laughs> I haven't started it yet. I am, I believe... See if you can get the first episode done. Oh, yeah, I'll get the first episode done. I'll get the first episode done. I believe we're um going to finish off Unsolved Mysteries tonight on Netflix, season two. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's, it's been all right, man. It's, it's not been too bad. Each episode's a bit up and down, but yeah, I think we'll do the last one or two we've got left tonight. But yeah, dude, it's been a good one. Thank you for joining me awesome. as always. Thank you so much to everyone out there for listening once again. And until next week, Horror Hounds, stay safe. Cheers, guys. Bye.